some students ask me what are the differences between section A and section B in ACCA financial management exam. They are not only different in the question format, but also the preparation approach. Because section B is a case-based multiple choice questions or objective test questions. You have you have been given three cases and five questions in each case. So what's the application? It means more specific and require in-depth knowledge in the topics. From the published materials, four areas in syllabus contribute more than 85% of marks in Section B, and they are investment appraisal, business valuation, risk management, and financial management function. And now, based on ACCA F9 March 18 examiner's reports, these videos tells you which key areas to focus in Section B and what you could learn from past experience. So the first area to focus or to share with you is investment appraisal. They are three things to focus. First, the non town cash flow investment appraisal calculation. The non town cash flow investment appraisal calculation, including return on capital employed, the roads, and the payback. And here, I extract examples from the past paper for your reference. It's from 2016, uh, September attempts in section B, like question 26 and questions 27. Uh, questions 26, it asks you to calculate the payback period of the investment project. And for question 27, it asks you what's the return on capital employed of the investment project. The second thing to focus under investment appraisal is sensitivity, risk, and uncertainty. In the examiner report published by the examiner, when calculating the sensitivity of NPV, the key is all relevant cash flows affected by a change in sales volume need to be considered. So what does it mean to you? Okay, an example shares what it is to you on the next page. Is in this past paper questions in December 2016, it asks you what is changing in sales volume which makes the NPV zero. And many students here, they only consider sales volume or sales revenue, because sales volume, sales revenue, they should be the same. So they just focus on sales revenue here in the questions. But 10 years in sales volume, you have to consider more than one factor, because two factors are relevant in the cash flows, including the sales revenue, of course, because sales volume directly affects the sales revenue, but a lot of students need to include the variable cost here. So you have to pay special attention in the sensitivity analysis, especially on sales volume change in, uh, or how the sales volume change make the NPV change as well. Two items will be affected, sales revenue and variable cost. And for risk uncertainty, we extract an example from specimen paper, which is third number page, question 13, 13. And here, only C is correct, because sensitivity analysis, it 
not correct for considering if there are accounting interrelationship between project variables. Okay, because sensitivity analysis does not account for it. And for B, it is not correct because uncertainty cannot be quantified, but risk can, can do it. So if it changed, uh, risk can be used to assess, uh, the probability analysis can be used to assess the risk, then it's okay, it's fine, it's correct. And for D, option B, it is not correct because given the cost of capital provided here is 7%, 5% discount rate only increase the effect, not decrease. So here, for C, uncertainty can be said to increase with project life, while increases with the variability of returns is correct. When the project life is longer, uncertainty will be increased. And for the return, like the variability means the variances of the returns increases, then the risk increases as well. The third thing to focus is specific investment decision under investment appraisal. So in the examined reports published, you have to pay attention about the capital rationing, you have to pay attention about the lead versus buy as well. The second area I would like to share with you is business valuation. Remember, three plus one, it helps you to work it on. What does it mean? Three plus one means three valuation models on equity and one valuation model on convertible loan. The first equity valuation model we would like to cover here is price earnings multiple or PE ratio. It is the income based model. And what's the problem found in past exam? We found from the examiner's report, a lot of students, they forget to deduct preference share dividend in working price earnings multiple. So remember to deduct a preference dividend when you work on the price earnings multiple. And the second equity valuation model is dividend growth model. Other than the PE ratio or the income based model, here next is about the dividend growth model. Let's look at what examiner tell us uh, what we need to do in the exam. In the examiner's report, okay, the students are happy to calculate using the formula, but they do not have full understanding about the model. So they only know how to calculate, but not good to explain or discuss the theory. And one example I would like to share with you about a dividend growth model from the past exam is found on December 2016. It is a good example to understand dividend growth model because you have the, these um, conceptual questions asking you uh, what's the assumptions behind the dividend growth model here. The third equity valuation model you have to focus is asset-based valuation model. And our examiner also share with you what's the key you have to remember. In, it is very common for students in March exam, they exclude the internally generated goodwill from the asset-based valuation of the company. So you have to remember the valuation of uh, the valuation model if you, if you apply the asset-based valuation model because you have to take out all the internally generated goodwill. So after the three equity valuation model, we move on to the convertible loan valuation model. From the examiner report, students 
making er errors, especially they don't know how to calculate a conversion premium. The example I share with you from the past paper exam a from the specimen exam. The question 17. So you can practice this question in order to make sure you understand how to get the numbers, especially the conversion premium. For the third area, you have to con you have to take care or pay attention is about the risk management. From my teaching experience um, over the last many years, it is most most challenging topics to many of you because um, maybe some of you don't know the um, the detail uh, concept behind the risk management. And here, I would like to share with a table about the risk management concepts. There are two columns. The first is foreign exchange, the other is interest rate. And also, um, I divided into three rows. The first row is the theories. Under foreign exchange, it is the PPP, purchasing power parity, and the interest rate parity. And the interest rate, it is term structure of interest rate. And the next row is risk exposure. Under foreign exchange, we have transaction exposure, we have translation exposure, we have economic exposure. And then just we have the gap exposure. And for the foreign exchange, we have two types of hedging instruments, internal hedging and external hedging. For internal hedging, we have matching, leading, and lagging. For external hedging, we have forward hedging instruments. We have money market hedge, we have future hedge, we have option hedge, and we have swap hedge. And then just ray, we have different types of hedging instruments, like FRA, it means forward rate agreement, the future hedge, option, and also swap. So what ACJ FNA examiner comments on risk management in March 2018? Four issues are highlight. Okay, you have to remember four issues that helped you a lot. The first issue is the risk management derivatives. In the examiner's report, it shows you the interest rate derivatives and especially interest rate options are the most challenging to a lot of students or candidates in the exam. So in future, the examiner encourages candidates to pay particular attention to this part of the syllabus. So it means it will be in the exam. Like interest rate derivatives, for example, interest rate options or some foreign exchange management tools, foreign exchange is like forward or options as well. So what do I suggest to you to do? To practice. Okay, one example showed you here and practice is from 2016 September attempt, the question 20, it is about the interest rate risk question. So he, you can go to practice this question in order to understand it well. And next issue you have to pay attention is about the money market hedge. Two major areas found in money market hedge when we look back um, in the March 2018 examiner's comments. They are encouraged entry applied and also not time apportioning interest rates. And for practice, I suggest you to check the December 2016 questions on the money market head. Okay, you have worked out the money market head it or the dollar value or the money market hedge in these questions. The third issue you have to pay attention is interest rate theories. In the interest rate theories, examiner's comment is a lot of students, they don't understand the causes of interest rate fluctuation and the underlying theories. An example showed you is also from December 2016. It's a very good paper, good reference, and also work it on. 
this question is asking you what's uh, the reason or consistent with the upward sloping yield curve. The fourth issue I'd like to share with you under risk management topic is interest rate gap exposure. And the examiner report sharing with you the students are not understand well about the gap exposure. And the exposure gap may, uh, is mainly derived between the interest rate sensitive assets and also the interest rate sensitive liabilities. So fourth area un under section B is the financial management function. Based on the published materials, there are about one to two questions relevant to this topic in section B. And five topics are often seen in the exam under financial management function. The first is about the purpose of financial management. The second is shareholder wealth maximization. Third is not for profit organization objectives. The fourth agency theory or stakeholders conflict. And the fifth one is managerial reward scheme. So what does the examiner tell me about information in the March exam? In the examiner's report, he mentioned about how to reduce the stakeholder conflict and what a company should do to maximize shareholder wealth. Students find, okay, they may not answer it well because they don't know well or the content of the financial management. If you like this video, just make sure you subscribe our channel right now. Also, if you want to have more ACCA exam information and resources, just go to bodypass.com to check. It's free. Now, I want to turn it over to you. Business valuation and risk management are considered more difficult than other topics in Section B. So, which of them is more challenging to you? Is risk management or business valuation? Let me know by leaving your comment below right now.